Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi, my name is Katie Wismer. I'm an author and an editor. I have six books out currently, but today we're gonna be talking about reading, which if you haven't been around on this channel for a while, this channel's been here since 2016 and it was originally just a booktube channel. We just talked about books and what I've been reading, and obviously as I've gotten older and I've started my own business and I've started publishing books, that content has really veered into more of the author tube space. We talk a lot about writing, we talk a lot about editing, and all of that kind of stuff over here, but I thought we would go back to my roots today and just talk about everything that I've been reading this year because for the first time in over a year I'm like really in a reading mood and I've been reading like crazy and I am so relieved. I didn't even know if I liked reading that much anymore to be honest for a while there and I think I was just trying to read the wrong books. I was trying to read genres that I used to like. So anyway, I'm gonna take you through everything that I've been reading so far this year, everything that I'm in the middle of reading. I'll have all of the books that I talk about linked down below if you wanna check them out. I'd love to hear down below in the comments what you guys have been reading, if you've been enjoying anything particularly. And I'm so excited about the company that I'm working with who's sponsoring today's video. They're called Lolly. They're the leading Bitcoin rewards app and browser extension. They work with over a thousand different brands. And basically you're just doing the shopping that you would do anyway and you get some money back in the form of bitcoin i was scrolling through all of the brands that they partner with and it's such an interesting mix there's like this is on my mind because i was just filing my taxes they have like turbo tax when they also have books a million and expedia and chewy which is where i get my cat stuff from it's super simple it takes like two clicks 30 seconds i'll have links down below in the description if you want to download the app or a browser extension on your computer basically there's no downside you just get some money back on the money that you were spending anyway and without further ado let's get straight into the video so let's start with the books that i am already finished with and then I'll get into my currently reading. So if you saw my recent video about why I'm happier and how I've been doing better this year, I kind of talked about it in that video, how I've been reading a lot of nonfiction, poetry, spiritual stuff. Let me give you this warning in advance, that's mostly what this list is. Although I'm hopeful that maybe at some point this year I'll get back into fiction. So the first book that I finished this year was 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. I actually started this at the end of last year and it just rolled over into the beginning of the year. So I've read two books by this author, this one and then The Mountain Is You. I actually think I enjoyed The Mountain Is You a little bit more, but I also think it might be because of the format that I read them in. I read The Mountain Is You physically and then I listened to 101 essays on audiobook. So I don't know, maybe read it physically and see if it is better that way. It wasn't bad at all. I actually really, really enjoyed the first half of it. The second half, I just kind of started to lose interest. It started to feel repetitive. I would still highly recommend reading it, at least for the first half of it. By the end of it, I was just like not as into it anymore. But this is basically a collection of essays about self-improvement and things like that and just things to change your mindset. It's not one of my favorite nonfiction books that I've been reading lately. It was still worth a read in my opinion, but if you're going to try one of her books, I would recommend The Mountain Is You first. The second book that I picked up this year, I wasn't sure I was going to to read this but then I saw that I could get it from my library app so I was like whatever it'll take me an hour to read it so I got Homebody by Rupi Kaur this is a collection of poetry so if you've seen my videos on poetry I read Milk and Honey back in like 2016 and I really enjoyed it at the time but by the time her second collection The Sun of Her Flowers came out I read that but I didn't really like that one so I kind of knew that I felt like I wasn't really connecting to her poetry that much anymore so that's why I didn't really intend to pick this book up decided anyway solidified the opinion yeah this isn't really the poetry that i'm looking for right now this one in particular i feel like is my least favorite of her collections it's not bad like it's always i connect with the ideas i like the sentiment behind it but this one in, in particular it was like i don't know i mean she's kind of famous for her little micro poems that are only a couple of lines but this one in particular there was like nothing that made me feel anything reading these poems it was more like she was just listing out what she was feeling and I mean there's nothing wrong with that where she was just, like describing an experience but it was so like matter of fact there was no emotion and I read poetry because I want to feel something and this one I still love simple poetry I even mean, if you've read my poetry that's pretty obvious but this was like too simple for me and there were some poems in here that I really really liked but overall I just found this really underwhelming and like I saw potential in it but I think she can do better than this. Or maybe I've just outgrown this style of poetry. 
who knows? Next, I read You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. This was actually a reread for me and I listened to the audiobook. So I read this for the first time years ago, maybe back in like 2018 and I really liked it back then, hence wanting to reread it. And I don't know what it was this go around with the reread. I just didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first time. I think it's still worth the read. But yeah, it was just kind of, again, like underwhelming. Nothing really hit me this time it just didn't make as much of an impact this go around this one is obviously also non-fiction kind of like business self-helpy and it is pretty heavily like rooted in law of attraction and like your mindset on money so because i've been getting so much into spiritual stuff this year i wanted to read the secret this is like the one book that everybody has read so i felt like at the very least i needed to know what people were talking about right like i just wanted i was curious about it i think it's a good like intro to law of attraction if you haven't started learning about it yet if you're kind of interested and if you're like me you just kind of want to see where a lot of people started from and why this book was so popular but of all of the spiritual law of attraction nonfiction books that I've been reading, this is probably my least favorite. Which feels weird because I feel like a lot of the books that I've read were inspired by this. But uh, this one, I mean, it makes some fine points and whatever. There's also a film on Netflix you could watch if you'd prefer the film version. I haven't watched it. But there were just so many things about this that I didn't agree with that rubbed me the wrong way. I love the idea of like the power of positive thinking and, you know all of that side of it but the whole like if you're living in poverty if you have cancer it's because of your thoughts like you've caused this to yourself kind of tone to it i hate that like no there was also some body image stuff in there that really made me uncomfortable and especially the phrasing of like now i'm my perfect weight if you're fat you're thinking fat thoughts like it just I was in shock sitting there listening to this section. The whole thing on weight made me so uncomfortable. So there were just parts of this book that made me um, real turned off by it. But I'm glad that I read it. I wanted to know what everybody was talking about. So after that, I picked up another poetry collection. This one was called Graffiti by Savannah Brown. So I read a novel by Savannah Brown a couple of years ago. And I know she has another poetry collection. I don't think I've read it though. I think this was her debut though. And at first I thought I wasn't gonna love this because the first couple of poems didn't really grab me, but I pushed through and I ended up enjoying it a lot more. This one is definitely more my style of poetry now than Ruby Kors is. It's still not one of my favorites, but definitely worth the read if you like that kind of like modern poetry poetry style. There were some in here that I really really enjoyed. I think she published this when she was like 19 or something so that's just impressive. It's a short collection too so it's fast to get through if you just want to give it a shot. And then the last book that I have to talk about that I've finished before I get into all of my currently reading things is Light is the New Black by Rebecca Campbell. So this is obviously another nonfiction spiritual book. This one was interesting. <laughs> I feel like the majority of the spiritual books that I read there's like I'm able to like pull out and like dig through it and find the things that I like in it and then there's a bunch of other stuff that I just kind of like okay just keep it moving that doesn't relate to me I don't agree with that but I'm willing to look past that to find the parts that I like you know so this one was one of those and it started off strong it cut <laughs> it comes on strong in those first couple of chapters and I was like I'm trying to be open-minded and I'm interested in learning about all of this but this beginning talking about like light workers and all of this kind of stuff it feels like a little too far out there for me however i pushed through and then i ended up really liking it so yeah there was just some things that didn't resonate with me or some things that i was less interested in but it's broken down into basically like each little section is like a page or two so you could literally just flip it open and read like one or two pages a day so i did like that format of it how it was very like digestible bite-sized little anecdotes basically and so some of them i really liked and i just feel like it's generally good vibes encouraging um positive kind of stuff so i've been liking reading these non-fiction spiritual books in the morning because they're generally like positive and uplifting and they just start off my day on a positive note so at the very least this was that it's got some stuff in here that was a little too weird for me but overall enjoyed would still recommend okay so currently reading, I have a million and one. I'm still reading Quit Like a Woman, The Radical Choice to Not Drink in a Culture Obsessed with Alcohol. I've been listening to the audiobook. I'm almost done with it. I don't know why I just haven't finished it. I've been really enjoying it. I've recommended it in several videos now. We're halfway through February and I still haven't had any alcohol at all this year. I haven't been drinking at all. And this is coming from someone who used to drink most days of the week. So um, this book has clearly made a pretty big impression on me and I'm also just feeling a lot better without it. If you want to hear more about it, I talk about it in that whole why I'm happier now video. This is another one where I feel like the beginning was really interesting to me and 
this second half at least the section that i'm in right now is less relevant to me so i think that's probably why i've stopped listening to it because the beginning was kind of just like talking about alcohol in general and it was really interesting with like the history of advertisements and comparing that to smoking and how doctors used to recommend smoking in ads and like how things have changed so that whole like history of it at the beginning was really interesting and just like talking about alcohol in general and this beginning in this middle section that i'm in right now it's just really really focused on aa and why the author doesn't like alcoholics anonymous and the part where it was like founded by men who were like wealthy and white at the top of society the whole history of it again was really interesting but now it's really just breaking down aa and stuff so maybe this is a lot more beneficial if you've ever been a part of that if you've ever like identified as an alcoholic i personally haven't ever experienced that i just drank more than i should you know i was a partier in college so anyway this like middle section has been harder for me to get through because it just feels less relevant to me but maybe the ending pick back up i've also been rereading big magic by elizabeth gilbert i haven't finished this yet i don't know why i reread this every year this will be like my sixth reread so obviously i highly recommend this it's been interesting now that i'm reading other spiritual books and listening to spiritual podcasts and stuff all of the concepts in this book that i loved years ago i'm seeing them pop up in so many other books and i didn't realize these were like widely talked about concepts so it's been really interesting but this was like my gateway into all of that this was the first book for me and this is one that i really recommend especially if you're a writer or any other kind of creative person i'm also reading bound in crimson by j.a carter this is the only fiction book on the list it's a reverse harem with vampires you guys know i love my vampires it's the first book in a series i think i'm like halfway through it i don't know why i stopped reading it to be honest i think i just forgot that i was reading it because i'm in the middle of so many books <laughs> maybe we'll finish it tonight honestly i don't think i've ever actually read a reverse harem book before so i didn't know if i liked them or not i was like i don't know i like vampires i'll try it so there's nothing wrong with the book um i see other people absolutely raving about it so i think if you like reverse harem you'll really like this i still haven't decided if i like reverse harem in general or not i don't know if it's for me but we are gonna finish it i am enjoying it i like the writing i like vampires so i'm having a good time i just haven't finished it yet i've also been reading everything happens for a reason and other lies i've loved by kate Baller. i was listening to this audiobook through my library i think i might have just lost my loan though this one i just stopped reading because it was really emotional and sad and i was like in the middle of grief we just had a death in the family so it's like i don't know if i'm in the right headspace to be listening to this anymore so we might come back to this eventually what's interesting is this person the author who's talking is very religious and like i said i've been interested in like spiritual books but won't get into that here if you know my background i'm not religious at all and i tend to gravitate away from those kinds of books but this one was really interesting i was just enjoying her perspective and her reflection she was diagnosed with cancer but again i just felt like i was no longer in the right headspace to be listening to an emotional memoir and then i've also been listening to the audiobook of i hope this finds you well poems by kate bauer i read another poetry collection by kate bauer last year called what kind of woman and i loved that collection would highly recommend so obviously i wanted to pick up another one and this one has been so interesting but i stopped reading it because i was listening to the audiobook from my library but i really really want the physical version so i'm gonna wait to finish it until i get that because basically what she did i love that she did this and it makes me like want to do this too she basically took all of her like hate comments and like nasty things that people have sent to her about her first collection and all of these kinds of things and i think this is what it seems like because i've been listening to it so i don't know what it looks like visually she's been like blacking out the hate comments and turning them into poems with a completely different meaning i love this like i love this concept i want a physical version so i can like see what it looks like visually but so far it's been really interesting and obviously i love the concept so if you haven't read her first collection would recommend and i think it's good to read that one first and then go into this one i love it like the ultimate revenge against people being nasty to her online i love it and i've gotten so many good recommendations from you guys in the last couple of videos that i've been talking about books in so i thought here at the end i would also throw in some that are on my tbr that you guys have recommended in case they sound interesting to anyone else watching this so someone recommended period power harness your hormones and get your cycle working for you by Maisie hill so this is non-fiction and i think it's about like syncing your life to your cycle and like things like that the person who commented recommending this described it in a way that like automatically was like oh that sounds really interesting someone also recommended rest why you get more done when you work less this is obviously another non-fiction psychology book and as a former workaholic this sounded perfect for me i've had several people recommend journey of souls by michael newton 
So apparently this is a hard book to find. I've been looking for it. It was difficult to find. Um, so once I get my hands on it, I'm gonna read this because more than one of you have now recommended it to me. I also recently just bought The Body Keeps the Score, Brained Mind, and Body in the Healing of Trauma. So I actually think this is gonna be my next read. It's basically about how your body stores energy, like how it, when you experience trauma, your body stores it and it can manifest in like actual physical ailments like pains and aches sometimes disease so um this is a whole concept i've actually been getting into a lot anyway and then i saw this book on it but then i saw a really interesting review of the book that has kind of put me off of reading it so i don't i don't know i don't want to you know make an opinion on it before i've actually read it but it was a pretty off-putting piece of information that i didn't know about this book so i guess i'll see how the author handles it when I actually read it but basically the reviewer was talking about how it felt like at the beginning the author was trying to get you to sympathize with a rapist and like telling you his story and how it affected him and his family and I'm like I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that so just throwing that out there I think those are all of the books <laughs> that I'll mention in this video they'll all be linked down below in the description if you want to go check them out I'll also have a link down below for Lolly if you want to download their app or their browser extension and just see all of the different stores that it's compatible with and get you some money back while you're doing your online shopping I'd love to hear down below in the comments what you guys have been reading especially if it's anything along the veins of what I've been interested in I'm counting on you guys for the recommendations right now because you keep coming through but yeah I think that's gonna be it for today's video i hope you guys are all doing well links for the rest of my stuff are down below in the description as well and i will just see you guys in my next video very very soon bye no.